Welcome back to Money Matters. I'm David Kroll from Mortgage Network, and this is Emily Johnson from Polaris Capital. And uh, we pretty much wrapped up the state of the, uh, the nation's e economic affairs and uh, the state of the markets in the first half. I hope you took notes. Yes, It'll be exactly. good for a week. <laughs> I, th I thought we were particularly brilliant this time. But, um, but the, um, what, I, what I wanted to introduce as a topic for the second half of the show is to, to run through the things that we look at as um, uh, mortgage bankers as opposed to uh, financial advisors, the things, the core uh, variables that we look at to determine somebody's financial health. And financial health is, is one of those big woolly uh, many faceted diamonds. There's so many different ways you can look at it. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, from the investment side of things, one of the jokes that I always like to make is that if, is that if uh, uh, we could predict the exact date of my death, then my, my West Highland Terrier could be my financial advisor. It would be so easy, <laughs> right. you know. I mean, because if you know that there is exactly 17 years, three months, and two days, right. then you, then maybe my West Highland couldn't do it. But, but certainly it would be a heck of a lot easier. Well, and that's, that's one of the interesting things when you put together a plan for somebody because there are, of course, actuarial assumptions around uh, you know, men versus women, married men, married women, single men, single women, uh, the, how long they're going to live. And in our plans... Happy people, sad exactly. people. Yeah. And, in our, and, and there's no really way to put the happy, sad, or anything like that into a plan. So as a result, you end up with the actuarial numbers. And so you're basically telling somebody, well, I think... We're looking at about 93 is kind of where we're at this year, and that's the end of the plan. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, it's, yes. It's, it's and, and so, so, you know, financial health is really determined to a large degree by those kinds of assumptions and how you're going to get there and what financial condition you're going to be in, whether your objective is to bounce the check to the undertaker <laughs> or whether your objective is to pass money on to uh, grandchildren and mm -hmm. children and so forth. So many different aspects. Right. The banker, me, uh, has a simpler set of objectives. So uh, where ours are easier to understand than hers, but hers are much, much harder and take much more intellectual capacity. They're very oh, hard. Yours are that, very difficult. I so I'm, I'm that. conceding that to oh. you. <laughs> um, ours, our big four are credit. In other words, credit is a direct reflection of. Uh, debt that you've incurred and specifically your willingness to pay it back. So it's, it's about uh, your capacity to pay it back and your willingness to pay it back. If you borrow $25,000 on a car loan and then you lose your job, your capacity to pay it back has been impacted. Um, if you borrow $25,000 for a car and uh, you keep your job, uh, but you find some other glittering object that you'd rather buy as well, and you simply don't want to make the car payment, then your willingness to repay. So it, credit is a combination of capability and willingness. Um, it's the cornerstone. And hi history. And, and history. that's credit. And history. History, is, yeah. history is credit, I guess. But. And your, your financial strength is, to a large extent, measured by your historical credit. But let's talk very briefly about the, that second part of the, the willingness and the ability because it's, it's been mm. amazing to me as, as a business owner and when I'm dealing with clients that need to uh, refinance their mortgage or buying a home or mm. buying an investment property, what is actually included in that ability to pay? Mm -hmm. Because many, many of my clients have investment um, investments, they have taxable investments, 401ks, IRAs, uh, et cetera. Those, those retirement assets typically are not included. I know there are some ways that you can do it that are a little you know, on, out, outside there. But typically, investment income, if clients have been living off of their investment income for 20 years, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really get included. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's one, and so if you could talk that and also as a business owner, you know, if you have W-2 income and 1099 income, what portion of your 1099 income is actually includable towards your ability to pay? Mm -hmm. so you can always look at, like, well, I can afford this mortgage because I have money coming from X, Y, and Z pockets. But from your perspective, you look at it and say, well, X is actually only worth 50% of X. Mm -hmm. Y doesn't count. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So um, we, would you we, mind talking a little bit? No, about I, I, I'd be perfectly happy to. Um, the, um, 
the types of income that are used are, are, uh, have to be submitted, from our point of view, have to be submitted to a very simple test. And the simple test is, is this recurring income and can it be depended upon to, be, to recur at the same level for a minimum of the next three years? Okay. Okay? So it's, it's got to be a dummy equation because people come in all shapes and sizes. There are as many different financial scenarios as there are people. And uh, the lender has to uh, make mortgages that uh, fit Fannie Mae mortgage securities, which make investment people happy because we have warrants and stipulations that, that uh, bar the door for the entry of our individual mortgages into the mortgage security. In mm -hmm. other words, we have to warrant and represent that this is a person of certain standing, of certain credit, of certain this, of certain income, and so forth. So we have to turn each of you strawberry fudge ripple people <laughs> into vanilla. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why investment investments, standing investment accounts are so difficult <clears throat> to translate into income because willingness is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you may well have a half a million dollar account sitting over there uh, that's invested uh, in such a manner as there would be quite huge penalties taking money out, mm -hmm. okay? Your willingness, you, ha you have great ability to repay us, but your willingness is a little short. <laughs> You know, you don't want to cash the money in. Right. Uh, uh, you have a half a million sitting over there in an annuity of some sort uh, uh, or a whole life policy, and the, the value of that policy or the value of that annuity <clears throat> is severely impacted if you start taking money out of it early, mm -hmm. right? Right, absolutely. You're, you have the ability, well, and in but, theory, you, but your willingness, not so hot. Well, and in, you know, uh, and that, yeah. that gets to the, you, Mortgage, credit, all of that is one piece of the overall pie, and that, that's, that's where financial planning becomes very complex because you'll, mm -hmm. always, you, you'll always hear on television, well, this is bad, and this is bad, and this is, you know, there is absolutely not one right way to do things as long as you fit it into a plan. For example, it might, you know, maybe they're uh, getting a $400,000 mortgage, you know, might make sense for me but it might not make sense for the person next door. And if somebody says, well, you shouldn't get a five-year arm, mm. you can't say that in a you nutshell. Can't you can't, you can't no. It's not an all-encompassing statement. It's no. how does that fit into my income, my, you know, my ability and willingness to pay the rest of my picture, what no. else am I saving for? It's all of those things. So whenever you hear somebody say, this is bad or this is bad, Think about how it is that it actually applies to that scenario. When, we, because, when, we're, when we're talking privately or with a client, exactly what, exactly what Emily's just saying uh, is the, the setting of the table for the conversation. It's more like the, the metaphor is more of a chessboard. There are all of these pieces that need to be taken into account. Well, you can have There's no one thing you can say. You can't say five-year arms are bad, or you, you can't can say annuities are terrible. Yeah, or, we can be sitting looking yeah. at the most perfect scenario, and then suddenly out of the blue, the spouse will say, oh, and I didn't tell you that I'm still paying $20,000 a month in alimony from this, and I have $200,000 in student loans from my kids from the first marriage. You say, okay, no, that actually impacts well, things. Well, that, really moves the chess, that moves the <laughs> right. chessboard, and, that, and, and when you move one chess and everything piece, else can look beautiful. the relationship of every other piece to it changes. Right. Uh, I so had financial a, health is very interdependent. Interdependent. Each of those pieces. I had a client yesterday who had literally five hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars of student loans. Oh my goodness! Five hundred. I hope they make 000. a lot of money as a result of that fabulous education. Five hundred thirty-nine thousand. Wow. That's that's a fairly fairly major chess piece. And you're not and getting what rid are of we, that. And what are we going to do with that? <laughs> yeah. you see? Um, Probably die with it. <laughs> it, it, it. It comes back to our uh, ability and willingness conversation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you have a $20,000 medical bill that you weren't anticipating and it isn't covered by your insurance, there may be ability but there may not be willingness. I mean, we see a lot of medical bills pop up in collection, right. for instance. Yeah. So you look into your heart. You, can, you, each and every one of you, have had moments of ability and willingness 
or ability and flux. unwillingness. Right. <laughs> you know, Always I'm going to fight that one. I'm going to call that guy. Mm -hmm. you know, so, well, know. then we could we certainly could dig into each and every little part of that, and I'm sure that we will in future shows. But we don't have any more time this week, so please have a wonderful week. Stick with us next week. We'll be back again with more Money Matters. Have a wonderful week. Oh, <laughs>